continue on with our 30th prayer. And then get, are you ready? Day eight. Amen. We're close to the end of the process. Really, it's a never ending process of growth and development. And so this week, we've been praying on Colossians chapter 1, verse 9 through 11. And I don't want Dr. Gina complaining on me. All right. Amen. Do what Dr. Gina says. Everything will be all right. Praise the Lord. Um, Colossians chapter 1, verses. We love you, Dr. Gina. Uh, Colossians chapter 1. Stay focused. Colossians chapter 1. We're praying for focus. Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. We are, we are praying for knowledge of God's will for our life, knowledge of God's choice. What is, what is his decision for our lives? And for us to have access to that knowledge, that wisdom, that understanding, for us to be able to be productive in our daily lives. And, and, and we also pray about having the power, to, the power, the energy, the strength to perform his will. Praise God. But the first thing we, we got to recognize, we got to ask ourselves, um, are we listening? Right? Are we listening? Go over with me, please, to 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. And this morning, we're going to read, or afternoon or evening, whenever you're joining us. Um, yeah, if, if this blesses you, go ahead and share it, like it, link it, delete it, whatever you do to show your approval. Amen. 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15 from the voice translation says, we live in the bold confidence that God hears our voices when we ask for things that fit his plan. I like that. We live in the bold confidence that God hears our voices when we ask for things that fit his plan. So that just, that just makes me wonder, should we be asking for things that don't fit his plan? Probably not. Because the impl implication here is that he's not listening. Right. Um, verse 15 says, and if we have no doubt that he hears our voices, we can be assured that he moves in response to our call. Here's my favorite um, catchphrase. Lord, have mercy. I mean, glory to God. We can have confidence when we know God's will, when we take the time to hear How about this. Do some research, find out what his will is in the word of God and then ask him according to his known will. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, let's go look at the same um, chapter and verse from the, um, the Passion Translation. And it reads, since we have this confidence, 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, we can also have great boldness before him. For if we, for if we present any request agreeable to his will, he will hear us. He's listening to the voices of those who are in agreement with his will, his plan, his purpose. This is one thing you say about God. He focused. He is focused. Hallelujah. And we as his sons and daughters, we ought to be focused. How about this? You ready for it? We're getting really deep on the same thing. Same plan, same purpose. Hallelujah in the authority of Jesus. All right, verse 15 says, and if we know that he hears us and whatever we ask, we also know that we have obtained the request we have asked of him. So first we need to know God's will in prayer. That's why we pray his word. So last time I checked, Colossians was in the Bible, which is the word of God, which is the will of God, which is the plan of God, amen. So we ask God for his pre-approved will that we spend time in the word finding out. We get that word in our eyes, in our ears, in our mouth, in our spirits, in our heart. Now we start saying what we believe. Not just grasping at straws, not out of desperation. Oh Lord, won't you hit me? Won't you? No. With confidence. That's what he's saying right here. Since we have this confidence, I know what God's will is concerning me understanding and recognizing what his will is and plan is for my life. 
And not only can we know it as an individual, as you as a person can know completely. As I said um, the last time we were before you, you could be full of the will of God. Just cram full of, that's what the Greek word where it talks about being filled with the knowledge of his will. Literally being crammed full like a net, like a, a hollow place or a receptacle. Just full of it. All right. Calm down, right? Okay. Um, go over to John chapter 16. What's our time looking like? John chapter 16. All right, we're doing good. John chapter 16. Let's start with verse 13. The Holy Spirit, he is the spirit of truth. If you'll listen, he will lead, guide, and direct you right into God's will. If you choose to listen, to yield, to respond, he'll lead you. But if you won't listen, if you won't yield, if you won't respond, he's not going to make you. That seems fair. Um, John chapter 16, look at verse 13. But when he, the spirit of truth, the truth giving spirit comes, he will guide you into all truth, the whole truth, full truth. For he will not speak of his own message. He will not speak his own message on his own authority. But he will tell whatever he hears from the father. He will give the message that has been given to him. He will announce and declare you to you things that are to come that will happen in the future. Sounds like a good idea, right? All right. Um, verse 14. He will honor and glorify me because he will take of, receive, draw upon what is mine. This is Jesus talking. And will reveal, notice this, will reveal, declare, disclose, trans. Admit it to you. Now, if you look at the King James, it talks about he will show it unto you in verse um, 14. I'm sorry, verse 13, 14 and 15. He, he says he will show it unto you. He will show it unto you. He will show it unto you. The word show in the Greek means to announce in detail. Specifically, we're talking here about things to come. You don't have to go see the hoodoo voodoo lady. You don't have to wait for a prophet to prophesy to you. You can get quiet and listen. You can go to the word of God and find out what God's will is. And the Holy Ghost on the ends will lead, guide, and direct you right on in it. Boom. All right. Let's look at verse 15. John chapter 16, verse 15 says, everything the father hath is mine. That's what I meant when, you know, because you're an heir and joint heir with Jesus. So you could say the same thing. So you're not broke. Sorry. Now you can act broke and think broke and get what broke people get if you want to. I don't know why I'm talking about this, but in reality, God's reality, you ain't broke. All right. That's for somebody. Everything that the Father hath is mine. That is what I meant when, when I said he, the Spirit, will take the things that are mine and will reveal, notice, declare, disclose, transmit it to you. He is the great communicator of the will of God to the believer. So this whole week, we're praying this not only for the church as a corporate body, team faith, the household of faith, the family of faith, but we're praying this for our individual selves. Because the best thing you could do for the church is you as an individual be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. Um, this prayer in Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 through 11, is a prayer for the knowledge, for, for knowledge and insight that can only come from God. So we're going to pray this for the church every day this week, every day. I'm going to pray it. You're going to pray it. We're on Facebook. We are on, um, you could be part of our group me app. And put in there, hey, I prayed the prayer of faith for the household of faith, for myself, and for all of our members and partners. Hallelujah. So let's pray. Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. We're going to use God's word as a template. And we come today with boldness and certainty that he's going to hear it. And he's going to respond. So 
So he's going to do his part. But my question to you is, are you listening? I don't think this will work if we pray, if we do our pushing, and then you just go sit in front of the TV and listen to do Netflix and chilling. Lord have mercy. Anyway, there's my little catchphrase again. I don't know if y'all have a peace sipping game every time he says, Lord have mercy. I'm, I'm too excited. I shouldn't have took a day off. Anyway, it's 11 minutes. Let me hurry this up. I know you got places to go. All right, Father, we just thank you. We just yield to your presence this morning. And for this cause, we lift up and pray for the household of faith, for all of our members, for all of our partners, for all of the members of the body of Christ. And Daddy, we pray in the authority of Jesus that each and every one of us individually and as a corporate body will be filled with the knowledge of your will and all wisdom, skill, and spiritual understanding, recognition, and, under, and insight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Father, I thank you that that wisdom and understanding will produce productivity in our life, enabling us to walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, and that we will individually and as a household of faith be productive in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. And finally, Daddy, I pray that the today, right now, before we hit the highways and byways or before we go and do whatever we have planned to do today, or if we're coming home and we're listening to this, Whatever, whatever situation this word finds us, Daddy, I thank you that you will strengthen each and every member of the household of faith with all might, according to your glorious power, producing patience and long suffering with the joy of the Lord as our strength in the authority of Jesus. Be blessed, be whole healed in Jesus name amen y'all have a great day afternoon evening you know what I'm talking about we will see you tomorrow God willing